So this week we're talking about words and we're just doing a one week series on words. Um, I'm pretty sure we're all aware that words have quite a large impact. And I think as kids, we were <laughs> kind of all taught that line of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Um, I'm sure as you have gotten older, you've probably realized that that's not <laughs> totally true because words do actually really hurt. Um, I, I can be a pretty sarcastic person, so I have found sometimes unintentionally um, my words will hurt <laughs> when I'm being sarcastic, but someone doesn't realize I'm being sarcastic. So I have to be very careful with that. And we, I mean, we have to be very careful um, anyways with our words and how we're affecting others. So the truth is we have all had an experience where words have hurt us. Um, words don't hurt physically, but they definitely hurt emotionally. And a lot of times it's more than just the words, it's the body language, the tone, um, and the intent to um, to hurt us when those words are spoken. It's never just about the words. Um, and we probably all have people that we look up to in some way. And those people um, have probably used harmful words towards others as well. But we have to understand that words really are powerful um, and they have the potential to create real harm and damage. Believe it or not, this isn't something um, that is an issue just for today. We're actually looking in a passage, um, and it's a letter written by a guy named James, who happens to be the brother of Jesus. Um, and when you read this book, you kind of get the vibe that James is very honest um, and straightforward. And so in this passage, he's talking about, um, he's being real and honest about the power of words. So let's read that scripture now. It's in James chapter three, three through five. It says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Everyone's tracking. James is talking about the power one small thing can have over the larger whole. He continues in verses five through six. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. So James definitely doesn't hold back. Um, and he, he's not saying that our tongue is evil, but he's saying our tongue is powerful, which means our words are powerful. So after that, I mean, <laughs> is there any good news um, from James? Not, not totally, because in verse eight, he says no one can tame the tongue. So the good news is that he doesn't stop there. Um, later in the chapter, he talks about how wisdom is connected to humility. Um, and then on the other hand, where you find things like envy, jealousy, and selfishness, um, you're gonna find other bad things as well. So then he says this in James 3, 17, but wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. P 
Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So in this verse, James is basically saying that whenever we um, are only looking out for ourselves, things aren't going to go very well. But if we humble ourselves, um, go after peace, and are thinking of others, that our lives are going to reflect that. So think of it like planting a seed for an apple tree. We're only going to get apples, but what if we wanted oranges? Well, we're not going to get oranges because that's not what we planted. And so in the same way with our words, we get what we plant. So think of it this way, pay attention to the power of your words. So when our words are full of jealousy, selfishness, envy, pride, um, intent to tear people down, what we're planting is a seed of disorder and we're planting unhappiness. Unhappiness is what is going to grow from that. If we're interested in a different kind of life, then we need to plant wisdom and kindness um, and peace and mercy. So if we want those things later, then we need to work on what we're planting with our words right now. If we want to use the power of words for good, um, it's not about taming the tongue because we can't do that. So it has to go deeper than that. And so using our words for good comes from seeing others as good. If we want to grow something different, we have to plant something different. And if we want to grow, um, if we want to grow something that our words are used for good, then we need to change what we're planting. All right, so all of that is awesome, um, but what is our application? What do we what do we do to start working on that? So let's first look at the people that have maybe hurt us with um, with their words, whether it's joking or they had the intent to hurt you. And let's kind of shift our focus and ask, how can I start viewing these people in a kind and loving way? So this way you can start trying um, to see the good in others, even when it's difficult. And then let's look inward and let's ask ourselves, what, a, what am I saying? Is it building others up? Is it tearing people down? Is it harmful or is it helpful? Um, and what the words that I'm planning now, are these going to help me grow later in, in a good way, in the way that I want to grow? And this, think about tools that you have access to that will help you. Um, I know a lot of you use text as your main communication or Snapchat or whatever, um, which in some ways is really awesome for this because it gives you time to think before you respond because a lot of times we're really quick to respond. Um, so before you respond, give yourself time to think, is this helpful or hurtful? Am I building them up or am I tearing them down with my words? Um, and in other situations, maybe you just need to give yourself more time to think and then start thinking of ways you can build people up and encourage them with your words. So the tongue is pretty powerful, but if we want to change our words, we have to change our heart. And so pay attention to the power of your words and what you're planting. If you're a follower of Jesus, this is more than just a good idea. This is a must because Jesus tells us that we must value, love, and respect others. And so the first place we can start doing that is with our words. So words are powerful. So let's be people who put that power in its proper place by using it the way God says is best.